all dear students so in this video we shall study about an another antibacterials that is quinolones and fluoroquinolones quinolones are basically synthetic antimicrobials that have got a quinolone structure and this quinolone they are primarily active against our gram negative bacteria next after few years the fluorinated quinolone were been introduced and they were not only active against gram negative bacteria but they also inhibited the gram positive ones now the very first member of the quinolones were nalidixic acid which was introduced in mid 90s and it was basically used just for urinary and gi tract infections okay so why this restricted use means because it have got limitations like uh, because of low potency modest blood and tissue levels restricted spectrum and higher frequency of bacterial resistance however a breakthrough was achieved in early 1980s where the fluorination was introduced in quinolone structure now this structure what you can see on the screen it is a basic structure of quinolone here you can see a carboxyl group at the position number 3 next here you can see it is a ketone group which is at position number 4 okay now this carboxyl group of position number 3 and keto group of position number 4 these are very much essential for bacterial activity of quinolones next if you want to make fluoroquinolone out of quinolones then you need to substitute a fluorine group at position number 6 okay so this markedly enhances the activity against gram negative and gram positive bacteria as well as mycoplasma and chlamydia apart from this even the addition of piperazine at position number 7 on fluoroquinolones significantly increases tissue and bacterial penetration and improves the spectrum activity uh, to include pseudomonas as well so this was the chemistry of your quinolones and fluoroquinolones next we shall check out the mechanism of action as you can see fluoroquinolones inhibits dna gyrase in gram negative bacteria similarly fluoroquinolones they inhibit dna topoisomerase 4 in gram positive bacteria this means that gram negative bacteria have got dna gyrase and gram positive bacteria have got dna topoisomerase okay see the both these enzyme gyrase in negative bacteria and topoisomerase in positive bacteria they they both have got almost same kind of work to do okay and what work they do they will produce a break in the dna strand and then they will reseal it back okay so means their actions are similar which is cutting and resealing both will remove positive supercoiling and introduces a negative supercoiling see what now what is this positive and negative supercoiling you will get to know in a minute the main difference between these two enzymes are gyrases they will remove positive supercoiling ahead of the replication fork to restore the chromosome's negative superhelicity whereas the topoisomerase fork they decatenates or untangles daughter chromosome after the dna replication okay so their work is their function is uh, different but their role their physiology is same that is cutting the dna and resealing back okay so do not forget we are talking about the mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones and how they work they will inhibit dna gyrase in gram negative and they will inhibit topoisomerase 4 in the gram positive bacteria okay so first of all we shall check out what normally happens in a bacteria uh, what normally is the action of gyrase and topoisomerase 4 and then later on we'll see uh, how our drug will inhibit these two enzymes and what will happen when these two enzymes are getting inhibited okay so now suppose this is our bacterial dna which is a kind of circular dna which is about to replicate 
and so for replication we need to unwind the double strand so we have got our enzyme suppose this is dna helicase enzyme that will separate the double strands of the dna into single strands which allows each strand to be copied now here you can see in these two ends as the two strands are unwinding at the edges the dna is super duper twisted see normally we know two strands are twisted with one another but when this twisting and coiling occurs too much it is said to be a negative super coiling okay and our both the enzyme that is our gyrase and topoisomerase their job is to remove negative super coil and introduce a positive super coil now you understood a negative super coil but what the hell is this positive super coil see you know too much coiling or you can say over coiling is known as a negative super coiling similarly when the uh, uh, when the strands are under coiled it is said to be a positive super coiling simple okay so the work the job of gyrase and topoisomerase for is to remove negative super coil and introduce a positive super coil okay so we shall check out about our topoisomerase enzyme and similarly you can apply the same uh, ideology to gyrases also now regarding topoisomerase enzyme we have got two types of topoisomerase we have got type 1 topoisomerase and type 2 topoisomerase regarding type 1 it have got a cutter in one hand okay and this cutter we call it as a nuclease so the action of nucleus is what a knife does that is cutting and in another hand it have got a bottle of glue that means ligating action so ligase so it have got two roles nucleus and ligase nucleus means with the knife it is cutting ligase means with the glue it is sealing or joining similarly regarding type 2 topoisomerase in one hand it is holding a nucleus and in another hand it is holding ligase but as you can see the type 2 enzyme it is inactive and to activate it it requires atp and after atp it will get activated okay so regarding these two types of topo, uh, topo isomerase you got to know one difference and what is that difference yes type 1 topo isomerase does not require atp but type 2 topo isomerases they require atp for getting activation next they even differ in their work so first of all let us check out the work of type 1 topoisomerase enzyme first now suppose this is a strand of dna and over here there is too much of coiling that is there is a negative super coiling so we need to remove this negative super coiling and we need to add a positive super coiling right so here comes our enzyme that is type 1 topoisomerase now with this cutter that is its nucleus it will break one of the double strand that is it will break the phosphodiesterase bond in the super twist of one strand let the free ends of the cut and untwist around the intact strand and hence once they have untwisted enough with the help of this glue that is the ligase it will seal the point okay and in this manner the negative super coil is removed and so a positive super coil is introduced so type 1 topoisomerase enzyme what it will do it will break one strand okay just remember type 1 means it will break one strand okay remember this point so that you can understand the type 2 very easily okay so type 1 topoisomerase what it did it was cutting one strand and then resealing back the one strand itself next we shall check out the role of type 2 topoisomerase enzyme again suppose this is a circular dna so this dna we know dna's are very long enough and it is quite possible that the multiple double strand it gets entangled with one another so under this situation we require an enzyme with untangling technique and the enzyme that comes into play is our type 2 topoisomerase yes it is resting now and we need to splash some ATPs to activate it. Now listen very carefully. This is a type 2 enzyme. Okay. So remember this number 2. 2 because it will cut 
two strands it has got the ability to cut both the strands of the dna double helix okay so now our enzyme it is fully active and what it will do with the help of its nucleus it will cut both the strand unwind it with the glue or you, we can say with the ligase action it will reseal it back okay one more twisting is there with the ligase cut and twist reseal back yes one more untangle is there cut with the nucleus with the ligase reseal back fine okay so in this manner it will remove the super coiling problem and make replication easy to take place okay see in bacteria like even e coli it has got topo isomerases working normally the bacteria has got clever enzymes like gyrases and topo isomerases some gyrases they will keep on working even if the bacteria is not replicating okay gyrases are untwisting the dna producing a cut twisting and resealing it back why these enzymes are working even when the bacteria are not multiplying because whenever replication of dna is required dna is already loose and therefore replication can proceed faster okay next now coming to our point of interest that is the mechanism of action of fluoroquinolones uh, in dna uh, gyrase it inhibits gram negative bacteria whereas in gram positive bacteria it will inhibit the topo isomerase 4 okay so we'll see how this fluoroquinolones will inhibit topo isomerase enzyme so due to too much of negatively supercoiled dna atp will come and it will activate our type 2 topo isomerase enzyme okay but we have consumed our fluoroquinolones and what this fluoroquinolones will do it will come to the glue the ligase and it will reduce the activity of this glue okay means the glue might not be working well but the cutter the nucleus it is very much active it will be cutting whatever it work it was doing its work but the ligasting ligation is not taking place the nucleus the cutter is doing its work but there is no ligation okay there is no ligation hence at last this enzyme will end up breaking the bacterial dna into fragments and these fragments cannot multiply and this is how quinolones or fluoroquinolones are working you can say it's truly not the drug which kills the bacteria but it's the bacterial enzyme which kills the bacteria okay so this was about the mechanism of action of your fluoroquinolones lastly we will be talking about the classification of fluoroquinolones see we know that when we add a fluoride moiety to quinolone we will get fluoroquinolone yes and it was in the 1980s when it this thing was done that is addition of fluorine group to quinolone so we got the first generation of fluoroquinolones which had just one fluorine group and the examples of first generation fluoroquinolones are norfloxacin ciprofloxacin ofloxacin and pefloxacin okay next after a decade that is around you can say in 1990s what we did instead of one we added two fluorine group to the quinolones and we got the second generation fluoroquinolones the examples are levofloxacin lomifloxacin gemifloxacin moxifloxacin sparfloxacin and prulifloxacin so now when newer invention we have done obviously it might have got some additional plus points so as compared to first generation these second generation fluoroquinolones they showed further extended antimicrobial activity to gram positive cocci and anaerobes okay so this is about the classification of our fluoroquinolones and this was all about our today's video regarding quinolones and fluoroquinolones i hope you people found this video helpful thank you for watching